Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to round number 18 of the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. This evening, Homestead Miami Speedway plays host to the final event of the season. Ray Alfala has already locked up the championship, but there's a lot more action and excitement to come from second all the way back. Tim Terry, Nim Cross here to call all the action for you, and Nim, even though Ray has that championship and that trip at Homestead Miami Speedway already planned out, we still got some money to give away from second on back. Oh, no doubt, then. We got a lot of great battles going on. We have the battle for second, as you uh, mentioned, between Thomas Hazard and John Gorlinski. Hazard right now has three points on Gorlinski, and that's a difference in $2,000. $3,500 for second place and $1,500 for third place. So that's a big battle going on. We have guys trying to get into the top 12 in points to get into those money positions. And we also have a huge battle for the 25th position. You want to finish in the top 25 in points, or you're going to be relegated to the Pro Series this fourth quarter so you can make it into next season and try to battle your way back into this series for next season. So they want to finish in the top 25 in points this season so they don't have to worry about that big battle to qualify in the Pro Series. And, you know, with all these battles going on, this is going to be a very exciting race, even though Ray Alfala is our champion for this season. And we also have Nick Wren from NASCAR waiting in the wings, as well as Tony Gardner from iRacing. But I, I want to talk about that battle for a second for just a moment. You forgot one important thing, Nim, and that's Brad Davies. He's 11 points back, and we know each position is worth one point. If something happens that Thomas Hazard and John Gorlinski have some trouble here tonight. We saw it lot, or two weeks ago, check that, at Phoenix, where we had a restart that took Ray Alfala from finishing, let's say, a top 10 position all the way back to 27th. If something happens that Hazard and Gorlinski find trouble early here, Brad Davies is only 11 points back from that third place position when you include the drop points. He could very well get up here and get an extra $2,500, it is $1,000 for finishing in fourth. He could get that extra $2,500 if a little luck plays into his hands too. Well, there's no doubt about it. Davies is what, probably the strongest of these three guys in traffic. If uh, things get sorted out where they're back in traffic, Davies is very strong and get through traffic very well. John Gorlinski is going to be very strong starting out front, and as long as you know he doesn't get himself back in traffic, he should be very, very strong in, in this battle for second place. Thomas has been struggling a little bit in the last few weeks, so he's kind of the question mark. He's been dropping back a little ways and has finds himself in this battle in the last race of the season now. So we'll see if his crew and him as a driver have got their, uh, got their set up together and their act together for this race. And you're going to see some of the clinching scenarios on your screen. It's it's simple, really, for that second, third, and fourth place finish. Hazard and Gorlinski, who Hazard starts in seventh, Gorlinski starts in first. Whoever finishes ahead of each other will get that possession. Unless Brad Davies has a good night and is up near the front of the field battling for that position. You see your current standings coming up here as well. Very, very tight between some of your drivers. And we should mention that there's a couple of drivers not here that did not make it. Josh Parker is not here. Jordan Erickson, who we'll talk a, a bit about in that top 25, not here as well. So there's a couple of drivers, and I know Chad Coleman is one of them as well, that's preparing for the pro season. It opens the door for some pros. We have Landon Harrison here tonight, and we also have Patrick Baldwin. And what a run in for Patrick Baldwin outside of the front row. Yeah, Patrick, is, this, is, this is just an example of the competition that's coming for next season and the competition that's coming on the, in this upcoming Pro Series. You know, we got we got a Pro Series driver right now, Patrick Bar Baldwin, starting on the front row of today's race. The, the guys that are going to be fighting for the last 25 spots to make it into this series for next season are n in no doubt going to be back end of the field drivers. They, those 25 drivers are just going to enhance this field, and it's going to make this series even stronger for next season. Make it into the top 25 points tonight, so you're guaranteed to be in next season. We'll save you a lot of heartache coming out through this, uh, this winter season. And we'll talk about that top 25 in just a few moments' time, but we want to get everybody in for the starting lineup, so let's start to go down the starting grid for the final race of the NASCAR iRacing Series World Championship season here in 2011 at Homestead Miami Speedway. We mentioned the front row a little bit earlier. It's John Gorlinski on the front row with a 30.566 to his outside. One one-hundredth of a second slower, Patrick Baldwin, 52. Your pole sitter, John Gorlinski's teammate, starts right behind him. That's the number 16, Thomas Lewandowski will start third. Robert Hall in the car number 30 will start fourth. 
Great run for Robert Hall in qualifying. Brad Davies starts in a fifth, and on the outside, it's the birthday boy, number 55, Brian Schoenberg. Starting seventh will be Thomas Hazard, and eighth, Ray Alfala, this season's point champion. Completing your top ten in qualifying, 72, Josh Berry, and 02, Jeremy Allen. Starting 11th will be Florian Goddard in car number four, and beside him will be Derek Wood in car number 54. Patrick Fogel in the 51 will start 13th, and 14th will be the six of Steve Sheehan. Starting 15th, Landon Harrison in car number 89. Right next to him, Daniel Pope. Last season's point champion, Richard Towler, starts in 17th and 18th, Pedro Mojica. Joshua Lawson will start 19th, right next to him in 20th spot, Chris Main. One of the drivers locked into that top 25 battle this evening, Connor McKenzie in the 10 and Jameson Spies in the 97. Starting 23rd, Matthew Moose in car number 14th. Vinny Sansoni will start 24th in car number 80. We got Byron Daly starting in the 91 and 25th and 26th is Stephen Gilbert. Charles Cosper goes from the 27th spot. Tyler D. Hudson will start 28th. Completing your top 30 in 29th is the 48 of Brad Wright and Brian Blackford in 30th. Gene Costa starts 31st, Greg Spears 32nd. Jason Anderson 92 and Andrew Fayash 33rd and 34th. 35th will be Dana Weimar, your oldest driver in the field, car number 27th. Justin Lowry will go off car number 66 in 36th spot. Drivers are rolling out to the grid. We see Sandeep Banerjee, 61 in 37th. He hails from India, and Nolan Scott will roll off 38th. Richie Davidowitz will go 39th, and Jesse Atchison will start 40th. And completing your field, the tax slayer number 45 is John Prather the Poltergoose, number 15 of Josh Connors, and Jordan Hightower, sponsored by GS Racing, completes your field. We are one lap away from going green, a flag racing, Nim. Final thoughts before we go green, what do we expect at a homestead? Well, the Gorlinski, the two Wrangler cars you see up there, Gorlinski and Thomas Lewandowski, have been very strong since iRacing 2.0 came out in the beginning of August with the new tire model. And uh, we got an unknown right there on the outside, Patrick Baldwin. It'll be very interesting to see how he hangs on here. Two weeks ago, it was Kevin King, a pro driver at the Phoenix International Raceway, taking away the victory. Patrick Baldwin looking to make it two for two to close off the 2011 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. Can he do it with this run from the outside of the front row? The first racing, or the first iRacing Ford Mustang pace car into the infield. Here we go. We are getting ready to go green at the Homestead Miami Speedway. 133 laps, and we are green. Great start for John Gorlinski. Gorlinski gets a good jar going down the front straight away. Thomas Lewandowski looks to the inside of Baldwin going through corner number one and two. Ray Alfala down to the inside of Schoenberg coming off a two. Side by side for second. Here comes the 52 on the outside of Patrick Baldwin. Thomas Lewandowski trying to take that second place position on the inside line. They look even going into corner number three. One thing about this track, the, the top side of the track is a little bit more banked than the bottom of the side of the track. It's called progressive banking. That'll give a momentum for Baldwin going down the front straightaway as he's able to use that speed of the higher banking on the top side of the track to pick up that second spot. Davies up into the wall and car number 11 had a little contact with Thomas Lewandowski and Brad Davies going to save that car but he's not going to save the positions he just lost. Here comes Josh Berry in the 72 and Steve Sheehan. He might make it three wide here. Davies is significant because Davies is in that battle for the second spot in the point championship. Davies currently in the fourth position, wants to get that second spot, $2,500, that may have cost him right there. Oh, down in front of Sheehan, still in the wall, save it, Brad, nice save by car number 11, but he's still going to lose one, two, and he's going to maybe salvage the position now on the outside of Daniel Pope, one, two, three more cars go past. Davies way loose here in the beginning of the race. Maybe his tire's not up to temperature yet. Maybe not enough air pressure in his tires yet. But he's gotten himself in trouble two turns in a row up into the fence. That can, is not definitely good for that car. Byron Daly going to go through the middle. Matthew Moose there as well. We look at some of these drivers that have something to race for. Top 25 in the points. And they're now trying to move past Brad Davies. If they can, that's one extra point, Nim. Yeah, definitely. They, these guys want to stay out of trouble. They don't like to see a car up there next to the wall. Davey's still running up very high against the wall. He's not comfortable. He wants to get to the back of the field and get the thing sorted out before he gets back underway. But you're right, all these other drivers, they want to stay away from him. They don't want to get in trouble. They got a lot of, a lot of fighting for here. 
And he couldn't really get in line anywhere there. That shows the competition of this series. So close in front of him, Fayash into the wall, 77, spinning around. And that's one of your top 25 competitors. That's going to hurt Andrew Fayash in the I racing today. Number 77, caution, flag will fly. Andrew Fayash down on the inside, gets a little bit loose, and he overcorrects, and he gets up into the uh, 86 car there, and he goes spinning around, but Davies, that happens right in front of him, Davies' car still in trouble, I'm sure we're going to see Davies heading to the pit trying to get that uh, sorted out there, but Fayash car heavily damaged in that accident. And did you hear that, Em? That's a big sigh of relief coming from some of those drivers battling for this top 25 bubble. Andrew Fayash came in at six points back. When you factor in drops, Justin Lowry, who was involved in that incident, two points back of Fayash. So those two drivers are looking at possibly relegation if they can't get up there, and that's definitely not going to help their cause five laps in. Yeah, and some of those drivers we're talking about, uh, you know, Nolan Scott, Patrick Fogel, Florian Goddard, Matthew Moose, Connor McKenzie, Jordan Erickson, Gene Costa, Andrew Fash, you know, like we were talking about, Justin Lowry and Richie Davidowitz. These guys are in that battle for that relegation spot, and they need to get in the top 25 in points. And while we work under the first caution flag of the evening, let's bring in Nick Rend from nascar nick what a series this has been this season it's grown exponentially since last season when it was the first maiden voyage for the nascar iRacing.com series world championship yeah it really has man it's uh we were saying before the broadcast here it's hard to believe that uh it, it seems just like yesterday we were sitting here watching this the same race unfold last year we we're gonna have a crown our first international champion and we've already crowned our champion uh and we'll do so in miami mr ray alfala Florida zone, so uh, it's exciting to see another year under our, have another year under our belts, and and watch how this pro series has fed um, the world championship series with all this talent. It, it's it's awesome, man. Uh, every week is uh, it's just more competition. The competition gets better and better and better, and uh, it's it's great racing. And Nim brought it up a little bit earlier. iRacing 2.0 has really rejuvenated some of these drivers on the racetrack. Of course, John Gorlinski has won a race since we went to iRacing 2.0. Just a fabulous innovation from iRacing. It is, man. I think, you know, it's a driver software update. It, uh, you know, we were up there earlier this year and we had a chance to preview the software and to, to take the cars out on the track. And it, uh, it's hard to describe. The car feels like it's so much more connected to the track. I do not know how Dave and, and these wizards up there figure this out, how to make it better, but it's constantly getting better. Every time I log on to the service, it's better and better and better. And, and you're seeing these guys um, do amazing things with these cars in a virtual environment. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Now, we run tonight at the virtual Homestead Miami Speedway, but coming up in November, there's going to be a big celebration in Miami to celebrate Ray Alfala's championship, isn't there? Yeah, man, you got that right. Um, you know, last year, we didn't really know how it was all going to unfold with Richard coming over from the UK. But uh, we kind of wrote our own history down there in Miami. Uh, I had a chance to meet a lot of these guys, a lot of the guys that are racing at the top of the of the points tonight, including Ray and, and um, um, <clears throat> Berlinski and Hazard. And these guys, all these guys that flew all over the from all over the country to meet Richard and to celebrate and that was one small part of it. Obviously, the check and the money that the guy receives, the uh, you know the notability that comes along with being a champion, the trophy, the ring, the, the you know the, the same company that builds our national touring series rings and and many of the trophies builds the same ring and same trophy for this for this winner. And I think all that stuff, the notability that comes with it. The media Q and A's, the party with your friends, getting getting to hang out with us and have all this access to the, the speedway, it's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable uh, set of benefits that kind of go with being a champion. And I congratulate Ray and can't wait to uh, to uh, see him again in Miami and, and kick it all off. Nick, we're going to get you to stick around. We're getting ready to go back to green. Green flag has flown. John Gorlinski puts the hammer down. And Nim, what a great start by Gorlinski. Gorlinski very good on the restarts here. He seems to have that all under control. Patrick Baldwin in his first uh, race here today doing very good. We got trouble in the back. Derek Woods in trouble in turn two. 
Lot of action as Landon Harrison, Josh Connors get involved in this. Jason Anderson has to go through the grass to avoid. And Derek Wood has heavy damage to the number 54. So the caution flag flies for the second time. And it looks to me like he and the 18 car of Daniel Pope II had a little bit of contact. And when something happens on a restart in him, it seems to happen big. Lots of cars involved. Pedro Mojica, Byron Daly included. Yeah, Mojica got spun around right there. And it looks like Derek uh, had a lot of damage involved. And one of the cars back there smoking Derek's day is going to be done as well as uh, maybe a couple other guys here. But Derek, yeah, it looked like some side-by-side, side-to-side contact between him and Pope, possibly it was Pope, uh, it sent the 54 car spinning around. But uh, Derek's had a lot of problems here late in this season, and uh, this race no different. And we talk about budding rivalries. We've seen Derek Wood get in it with Jordan Erickson late in the season. I believe Daniel Pope and Jordan Erickson share notes so I'm not sure if it's possibly a rivalry between teams or, or what have you, but those are the two drivers that did make contact there, Pope and Derek Wood, to spark off that incident. Nevertheless, there's going to be some drivers crossing their fingers and hoping the damage does get fixed so they can get back out here and salvage what's left of their NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship season. Let's talk about that Pro Series for a little bit here, Nim. We have the top 25 that finish here this evening in this series. They are locked into the 2012 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. They can pretty much collectively take a sigh of relief and take the winter off saying, I don't have to race my way in. Then you have the bottom 25, and then you have the top 12 from the first three seasons of 2011 for the NASCAR iRacing Class A Series that are going to come in. That is going to be one heck of a series. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, 36 drivers from there and 25 drivers who uh, were out of relegation in this series are going to be fighting for 25 spots that get you into next year's NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. This year, the series, uh, the Pro Series coming up uh, this fourth quarter will involve 12 races and uh, these guys will have to fight every week to stay in that tw top 25 points and get in that top 25 points. And the competition all season long has been going on all season long for all the drivers in the Class A Series here at iRacing, the NASCAR iRacing Class A Series, where th they've been fighting uh, for each quarter to be in the top 12 in points. And the, there have been thousands of drivers trying to make those top 12 spots. So the, the 12 drivers who have made it in each quarter have been you know each season have been absolutely unbelievably good drivers and those 36 drivers are now going to go compete with the the top 25 the bottom 25 drivers in this series and they're going to see who's going to be the best 25 that will make it into next season's uh, competition those 25 drivers may are so good that may very well produce our championship contenders for next season and you look at some of the drivers that might very well be in that series. We talk about drivers who haven't had a good season in this NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship, but are still at the top of their game. Let's, let's talk about Sandy Banerjee, Justin Trombley, Jordan Hightower, Chad Coleman, Josh Connors, Jesse Atchison. Those are some of the names. Josh Lawton, uh, possibly Richie Davidowitz if he can't lock himself in tonight. Those are some of the drivers that are at the top of our sport right now and they are sitting in the back half of the field when it looks at points then you have guys like Jim Caudill Jr. Kevin King we see uh, Landon Harrison out in the racetrack Patrick Baldwin who currently runs in second Harry Weidelitz uh, uh, Jeremy Thornton Michael Conti Dale Earnhardt Jr. the names go on and on there's so much talent there that pro series is going to be one to watch and one to follow throughout the off season or the winter season to see who does make it up into this series next season. Pace car lights are off. We'll be going green next time. Bye. Yeah, it's going to be a very, very exciting pro here. There's no doubt. And uh, if you're new to iRacing.com and the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship, what you're watching here is is uh, normal guys sitting at their computer and racing each other in this in this competition that you see here from their own computers in, the, in their own homes, and they are battling each other on the track in their NASCAR style, on uh, these NASCAR cars, uh, 
in you know front on their PCs and they're racing each other and the, the they're battling everybody at the tracks that these tracks are uh, scanned and uh, within a millimeter of accuracy and they're fighting each other for a NASCAR Series championship uh, just like the the real guys or the guys that you see uh, in the uh, series on on TV on Sunday so it's the same thing that's just a different media of doing it and the racing is uh, very hard very competitive and uh, it's going to be uh, a very exciting uh, pro series and uh, the end of this race. Pace car set to duck off here. John Gorlinski is going to control the restart. Patrick Baldwin in second. Ray Alfala, our champion for this season, sits in third and he really has nothing to lose. Nim, he can go for the victory and not have to worry about points. Pace car is off. Gorlinski puts the hammer down right here. Green flag flies to 52 of Patrick Baldwin. Now going to fall under assault from the two of Ray Alfala. Alfala is there looking for second. Yeah, Alfala uh, definitely will take uh, advantage of the little bit of timidness there, timidness there by Patrick Baldwin. Baldwin's been a little bit slow on these restarts. And uh, Alfala, your champion, who's been running great all season long, he'll say, I'll take it. And he'll move into that second spot, no problem at all. Patrick Baldwin, though, going to fight on that outside line for a second. He is going to lose the battle, though, in the middle of the corner to Alfala. Now, here comes Robert Hall. Robert Hall looking for position number three. Great run so far by him. And just a couple of spots back, Jeremy Allen trying to hold off the 55 of Brian Schoenberg. That's the battle for seven. Yeah, Schoenberg looks to have the position down on the inside. Allen will have to fall back in line as he gets a little bit of, uh, of battle there from Steve Sheehan. Sheehan looking for the spot on the 0-2 of Jeremy Allen as Schoenberg now under fire again from the Mason Baker design. 0-2 of Jeremy Allen. He's got the nose there underneath coming out of corner number four side by side down the front. Yeah, Jeremy had to lift just a little bit there coming off of corner number four as he got uh, long side started pushing up a little bit, but he had to get out of it. Caution flag will fly here as we're under caution for the third time. And the 32 into the wall, as that will bring out the caution flag. Sandy Banerjee also involved in this incident. And my apologies, 92 with Jason Anderson, who is trying to get going again. And it looks like he may have rode the fence in corner number one. Looking back here at the replay, the three of Stephen Gilbert checks up for something in front of him. And Sandy Banerjee cannot find the brakes quick enough. He gets in to the three and the 92 gets launched by the 91 of Byron Daly. He's going to ride the catch fence. It's a good thing that catch fence is there. He's going to roll down the banking and find a gear and get going again. So a tough break for those drivers who were trying to check up there and that will bring up the caution flag on lap number 16. Yeah, that was a bit of a strange incident. It looked like the three car, Stephen Gilbert, um, may have saw something in front of him that he didn't like and he just slammed on the brakes pretty hard. Uh, it seems to be a, a bit harder than probably needed and that surprised the guys behind him. Sandeep had nowhere to go. Interesting uh, about Sandeep, as you mentioned in the rundown, Sandeep Energy races with us from India. So we were talking about how all these guys are racing from the comforts of their own home. They're also racing from all around the world. Sandeep Banerjee racing uh, from his home in uh, India. And we do have the international flair. Of course, we mentioned Richard Towler as well racing from the UK. And we also have Connor McKenzie racing from Toro, Nova Scotia. We talked to Connor on Hot Lap Radio last week. And he's one of those drivers that's really had a great season so far. Had a career best finish of fourth at Darlington way, way back at the start of the season. And he said that was really the point where I could light the fire and get going. But it's like on a real car when you have electrical problems or when you have motor problems. He had hardware issues. He had computer problems throughout the season. And he just couldn't seem to get it right and tweak his graphic settings to where he wanted them to be. He's he's had some issues this season. Connor McKenzie trying to lock himself up into the top 25 in the point standings, and he's had a rough go of it so far here this evening as he's dodged a couple of wrecks, but he's up in 15th place right now. Yep, Connor having a, a good run here today so far, and uh, you know a lot, a few of these drivers though have have any type of connection issue and connection uh, or computer issues. Uh, are, are rarely an issue 
Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, somebody's having a problem with their computer or something like that, and that can be an issue. And, uh, you know, there's always Internet issues uh, uh, from time to time. But you're right, the, this series uh, does have a lot less failures possible than other, you know, the, uh, the NASCAR uh, Spring Cup series or the Nationwide series. But there are some different kinds of failures that could happen here also. Should mention as well as we're touching on that top 25 battle and we keep coming back to it because it's, it's such an interesting battle with so many drivers involved in it. Nolan Scott right now scored in 18th place. He sits 22nd in the standings. He's pretty close to being locked in if he can really back up where he is right now. You got guys like Jordan Erickson. Of course, Erickson not here, so that's definitely going to hurt his chances of being locked in to the series. Matthew Moose is the driver on the hot seat right now. He is on the bubble and Matthew Moose in car at number 14 is running in 20th place so far so he's doing what he has to do if he can pick up a couple of more positions i'm sure he'd feel just a little more safer jean acosta is running out there in 28th position he's 26th in the points or 27th in the points check that we talked about the 15th place connor mckenzie andrew fayash had the problems earlier in his race car andrew fayash is one lap down in 36th position justin lowry had some issues earlier as well justin lowry runs 35th and Richie Davidowitz, far outside, but does have a shot at getting this name. Richie Davidowitz is back in 22nd place. Yeah, it is an outside chance, but uh, he definitely does have a shot to, shot at it. And if you are joining us from iRacing.com, you're looking at the stream, you, you say, I, I want a, a better quality stream. There's a link right below for a high quality stream that you can get those cars as sharp as they can be and very sharp looking Homestead Miami Speedway and very sharp looking Chevrolet Impala SS's that we are running here on the racetrack this evening. Field has doubled up. Pace car lights are off. Next time by, we go back to green with 20 laps on the board. Gorlinski and now Ray Alfala on the outside. John Gorlinski controls the restarts. He's the leader in him. But he's got some great starts on Patrick Baldwin. You think Ray Alfala is going to be a little bit slower to the draw, possibly like Patrick Baldwin has been, or do you think Gorlinski is going to try to get him on the outs outside here? Well, Alfala won't be slow on the draw at all. Alfala knows this game. He knows exactly what's going on. And uh, Patrick uh, is pretty new to this series. So, you know, uh, Patrick just trying to, to gain the respect of, uh, I think, the drivers out there also. So, uh, Ray... Ray is the man, and uh, he'll be on the, uh, I think, quite a bit uh, a challenge for that lead if he can. Row two, very intriguing. We have Robert Hall on the outside in car number 30, looking for a great top five run to really close out this season, and Patrick Baldwin on the inside in at 52. Watch those two drivers as they try to battle for their first series victory. Pace car is going to duck off right here. Lap 20 going to come to a close. Green flag will fly in John Gorlinski. Gets another great start now. Here comes Baldwin. Baldwin to the inside of the two. I was wrong about that. Gorlinski again, a great restart. Caught Ray Alfala sleeping there just a little bit. Baldwin down to the inside of Alfala, trying to pick up that second spot. Alfala fighting back on the outside line. The Pro Geek Consulting, number two, going to take the advantage off corner number two and go to second place again. Patrick Baldwin falls back to third. Robert Hall maintains fourth. Battle for fifth. Thomas Lewandowski and Thomas Hazard side by side the nine trying to hold off the 16. Hazard currently second place in points. He's trying to hold on to that second spot. That's $3,500 that gets paid out to the second place points uh, after this race today. So fifth spot, he's trying to, everybody gets kind of bunched up there a little bit, but Thomas Hazard running very good in the ninth spot right now. Close call there. Great driving by the 0-2 of Jeremy Allen and the 55 of Brian Schoenberg as Thomas Lewandowski fell in the line in the number 16. As you look back to the Mason Baker designs, 0-2 of Jeremy Allen. He's got Brian Schoenberg a little bit. Schoenberg now falling into the clutches of Josh Berry. As we are, we're talking about uh, Hazard there a few minutes ago. He's running fifth, doing a good job. But the guy he's fighting in points right now is up in the lead. And... Uh, there are only three positions difference, and now that uh, Gorlinski has uh, led, a, led a lap, obviously led a bunch of laps, uh, that's still uh, a lesser difference. So the Hazard needs to make his way up into the second or third position to have a shot at that second place of points right now. Big wiggle by Patrick Fogel in the 51. Richard Towler, Josh Lawton, and Chris Main 
all battle for the position with the 51. Add in Brad Wright as well in the 48. That's a battle for 10th on back. Fogel had the position in, but one little small wiggle is going to open the door for last season's champ. Yeah, he seems to be struggling with that car setup uh, right now a little bit. And you see these guys going down the corner and a lot of checking up mid-corner. You have to woe these cars down quite a bit in the middle of the corner. Very heavy, very small tires. You know, you got to be real careful at the center of the, cor center of the corner that you don't run in the back of the car in front of you. But, uh, you know, it's a very high bank track. Progressive banking allows for a lot of different lines. And you just got to make sure you don't get into the car in front of you. And there's a hornet's nest back here battling for positions is Brad Wright in the 48. Right behind him it's Jamison Spees in the number 97 as he passes Nolan Scott. Here comes Tyler Hudson on the outside as well in the 10 of Connor McKenzie battling for the positions. Give a call out to the 06 of Nolan Scott. Brand new paint scheme on that race car. Nolan doing a great job right now running in the 16th position the last time by this time by being scored in the 17th position but a good run for him so far very early in this race we will race 133 laps We're currently working lap number 26 and that is low land lions on that nolan scott machine as he gets passed up by the 10 of connor mckenzie on the inside mckenzie looking to take away that position Nolan Scott still losing a couple spots back there. He's now uh, behind, behind the 10 car of Connor McKenzie. So Nolan falling back to the 18th spot right now. The 11 car of Brad Davies right now. You saw him slide back earlier. And we're going to slide back just a few positions to find Brad Davies. Davies sits in position at number 22 as Richie Davidowitz passes up the number 11. So Brad Davies hasn't been able to really rebound yet in him, but he still has many, many laps to do so. Yeah, he does. But I think, you know, we, we've seen him in uh, these past races where he is he is very loose uh, at the beginning of the start. And you take quite a chance when you do that. You can be very fast. And Brad Davies is the master of finding that area where he's loose enough However, very, you know, very quick where it comes to him. And I think maybe he just stepped over the line a little bit at the, at the beginning of this race, and he's trying to make setup adjustments that will allow him to get the car back, dialed back in, so he can make a charge later in this race. And you talk about a fine line. I know with these Chevrolet Impala SSs, these drivers put in hours and hours of time them on their setups. There's so many things you can adjust in these race cars. This is the, the pinnacle of our sport where these guys are the top 50 drivers, the top 43 drivers in this race of thousands who competed at iRacing. And, uh, you know, they are the best of the best and they do put a lot of time into their setups, uh, you know, in the, re in the normal racing series, regular racing series online. Uh, there are many people who share setups and uh, work with each other. iRacing also offers a base setup uh, list of setups for people to get out there and drive but uh, these guys are the pinnacle of the sport and they try to get every tenth they can just as you would see in any real racing series zero two car jeremy allen is hunting the number 16 a thomas lewandowski that is the battle for position number six just behind them you see the 55 of brian schoenberg and the 72 of josh barry go at it that's the battle for eighth and ninth place as you ride on the roof with jeremy allen you see a whole lot of wrangler in front of you yeah, Lewandowski started in the third position, currently running in a sixth spot, so he's lost a couple spots at the beginning of this race. Thomas Hazard moves his way up into the fourth position, which is only two spots out of about where he needs to be. Field putting one car a lap down. I believe that's the 15, and Josh Connors going one lap down. Indeed, it is the Mason Baker Designs number 15. Sharp-looking scheme on that race car, but he's going to go... One lap down early in this race as we work lap number 32 of 133. Yeah, he was involved in that second incident of the day with Derek Wood uh, where he had a lot of heavy front end damage on that incident. He's just trying to ride around and gain some points and hopefully make it into relegation for next season. Thomas Hazard begins to charge to the front of this field. Hazard up to position number four, and he looks at position number three just in front of him. That's Patrick Baldwin in the 52 just two tenths of a second in front 
of the main performance PC number nine. As they go into corner number three, they battle for third. Hazard closing in a little bit on Patrick Baldwin. Baldwin's still doing a great job uh, for being a newcomer to this series, up in the third place right now. Thomas Hazard looking him over, still not close enough to make a challenge. He's got Robert Hall, who's having a great race today in the 30 car right there in the fifth spot. Uh, everybody kind of getting sorted out right now and putting some laps in. I believe everybody's just trying to get sorted out, get some laps in, get to the second half of this race, and then make their moves. 0-2 with Jeremy Allen battling with the 16 car of Thomas Lewandowski. That's the battle for position number six. Drag race down the front straightaway. 16 car will have it here, but the 0-2 continues to fight back. Here comes Brian Schoenberg, 55, on the back end of the 0-2, looking to make something happen for that position. Yeah, down the inside, very tough, and you see it gets a little squirrely down there. 18 of Lewandowski up on the high side there. I'm sorry, car number 16 of Lewandowski up on the high side. Down the inside, you know, you're trying to get as much speed as you can, but it's so easy to slip up the track. You bind the car up a little bit as you're coming off the corner. That kills your speed. Lewandowski uses the upside of the track, the higher banking on the outside, to keep the car free, and that allows him to have more momentum coming down the straightaway. As Schoenberg now looks to the inside, trying to make a three wide, but these guys being side by side, slowing up a little bit, letting those cars behind catch up. You know you're slowing up just a little bit when you stack up three cars behind you. Schoenberg and now Josh Berry to the outside of the 55 of Brian Schoenberg as they battle in front of them. And it looks like Josh Lawton is also closing in on this battle in the 40. Fantastic battle for position as Jeremy Allen comes right up in front of the 16. Yeah, battle for both these positions here. Jeremy Allen gets the 16 car, but still side by side between Schoenberg and Barry. Barry got up to the outside coming off of corner number four. That last lap by, they're still side by side as they come down the straightaway. Schoenberg gets a little bit loose, and and, uh, and Barry takes that position. And here comes the 40 on the inside. Josh Lawton looking over the 55 of Brian Schoenberg. That is a battle now for positions 9 and 10. And it's going to close in the likes of Richard Towler and Patrick Fogel licking their chops, looking for a top 10 position. If these two continue to battle side by side, Schoenberg takes a position for now. But here comes the 40, and here comes the 0 8 into the frame. Schoenberg trying to make that momentum on the outside work right there. The uh, Joshua Lofton down to the inside has a pretty good setup. Schoenberg seems to be struggling right now, but Lofton trying to make that work. And he gets in the back of Schoenberg. Schoenberg sliding, and he saves it. Great save by the 55 of Brian Schoenberg, and he is going to lose one, two, three, four, five positions. Here comes Jamison Spees in the 97. He might lose six, but Nim, what a save by the 55 of Schoenberg. That could have been in the wall, and that could have been lights out for the 55. Yeah, Schoenberg was trying to take that position. Lofton wasn't having any of it, and Schoenberg did a great job saving that car at over 180 mile an hour through turn number three. And we should mention 55 of Brian Schoenberg comes into this race in P7 in the point. So he has a little bit to fight for when it comes down to the championship. And at the end of the season, possibly some high racing credits and possibly some cash if he can get up on the wheel and get that 55 to the front of the field and gain some points. Side by side behind him, though, 0, 1, and 10. Oh, Tyler Hudson and Connor McKenzie, close quarter racing for them. Yeah, McKenzie and... Uh... Hudson get him sorted out right now. They got Jamison Spees down on the inside. He was scored in the 14th spot the last time by Spees, trying to make up a couple positions. Take advantage of Schoenberg while he's got those rear tires hot. They should be cooled down by now. He should be okay. But Spees looking down on the inside. Schoenberg just wants to get back in line and get things sorted out. It's good, a good thing for the 0, 1, and the 10 behind them, though, as Schoenberg gets a little loose going into corner number one. It's letting them catch up. 55 of Schoenberg all over the place in corner number two. He's going to lose that one position, and here comes Connor McKenzie. There's one point he gained on the 0, 1 contact made, and the 55 up the racetrack. The 10 trying to get underneath him, and it looks like he may get the position here. Yeah, it looks like we got some trouble behind this battle right now. Richie Davidowitz may be in the wall on the back straightaway, but it uh, looked like McKenzie was, or not McKenzie, but Schoenberg was overdriving the car a bit and uh, gotten, uh, gotten those tires heated up. But uh, behind them, um, Steve Sheehan, Nolan Scott, and Richie Davidowitz getting in trouble on the back straightaway. Oh, boy, and two of those drivers involved in that top 25 battle. It looks like Sheehan trying to force it three wide and two contact 
or those two cars make contact. The 06 and the 14. Nolan Scott, Matthew Moose barely squeezed by that Richie Davidowitz machine. And Davidowitz right now comes into this race 30th in the point standings. So that's not good for him. It's good for Matthew Musso as he sits on the bubble in the point standing pitcher. Here comes John Gorlinski and the rest of the field down on the pit road. Yeah, Gorlinski and these guys are heading down pit road now. They're definitely going to take right side tires. Not sure if they're going to take left side tires or not. We'll have to see as their crews come out and they make their adjustments. The uh, right side's up on these guys. They'll fill up uh, with fuel. We're on lap number 43. 133 is your race different distance, so they will have to make another pit stop uh, towards the end of this race. John Gorlinski with two tires. He pulls away, and he will lead the field off pit road. We'll sort everything out as to what happened on pit road who will restart where for the restart in just a few moments time we're going to step away for a quick break and we'll be back in just a few moments time here for the nascar iRacing.com series world championship iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com. Welcome back to the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. We work lap number 45 this time by. That will be completed, and we'll be back to green flag racing. So we have less than 100 laps remaining. Gorlinski leads Ray Alfala, Thomas Hazard, Jeremy Allen, and Josh Berry, your top five. So, Nim, some new faces up here in the top five, and they're going to get ready to go green flag racing here at the completion of lap 45. Yep, still, still over uh, 90 laps to go, so a long way to go, and these guys uh, need to pace themselves and uh, save their tires. they got one more pit stop to make before they get challenged, but they do want to get in position. Schoenberg was struggling there as uh, that last caution came out, so he's going to want to get that sorted out as John Gorlinski takes the green flag. A little bit better start there by Bald or Ray Alfala. He'll fall in the second place. 
and Jeremy Allen going to dive to the inside of the champ. These two and the zero two side by side as it looks like we got trouble in the back. Chris Main is involved in this incident. He's down turn one, turn backwards. I believe Florian Goddard may have got a piece of this as well. And it looks like Brad Davies and Chris Main, as they checked up, Chris Main gets into the back of the number 11. And Richard Towler, just like the last incident we saw, Nim really nowhere to go but into the back of the number 38. Not a whole lot of reaction time there. Connor McKenzie may have got a piece of this as well. Not sure if he got into Towler. I believe he may have just got a piece of the 08. As he went by, Pedro Mojica involved, as is the 0-1, 33 of Brian Blackford. Oh, 14, Matthew Moose. Your bubble position in the top 25 is involved in this, and that could change his strategy going forward here. Caution flag will fly for a multi-car incident. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Maybe uh, the 11 car missed a shift or something, but again, you know, you see a car slow down, down the straightaway, for in the throttle point, you know, where they did not expect it to slow for some um, strange reason. Maybe the 11 car again, not ready with his setup or he misshifted or something, but that caused a big power for the guys behind. But Brad Davies there, car, his car all of a sudden slowed, and the guys behind had no way of knowing that was going to happen. And, uh, you know, they just gathered, gathered up in it. Davies having a lot of trouble here today. It's a very... Very uncharacteristic for, for Brad Davies. He, uh, he's usually right there and uh, very strong all race long, and he's had a lot of problems today. See if the production crew hasn't already to get an onboard of the 96 of Jean Costa. This is what these guys are battling for, Nim. They're battling for the top 25. Jean Costa may have just saved himself some damage and a possible top 25 spot. He comes in to this evening with drop points, four points behind. He has to gear down to avoid a little bit of a spin to get out of the way of the drivers in front of him but that may have very well just salvaged a top 25 position for Jean Costa with the way everything's going this evening because you look down Florian Goddard involved Erickson not here Matthew Moose Connor McKenzie they both have damage Andrew Fayash has retired from this race that may have very well salvaged Jean Costa a top 25 position in the point standings if he can get back up on the wheel in these final laps yeah, and it could have hurt a few guys. Uh, we'll have to see how it all sorts out, but uh, Richard Taller finds himself on pit road, and that car uh, kind of walked a little bit cattywampus there, uh, a little sideways down the straightaway as his rear end is uh, messed up quite a bit on that car. So a lot of damage on uh, your last year's champion car, the guy who wore the ring and got the check and uh, stood on the stage with all the other NASCAR champions down at Homestead, Richard Taller in trouble and possibly in jeopardy of not making this series for next season. And the 14 of Matthew Moose sits on pit road as well. Matthew Moose comes in one point up on Connor McKenzie in 25th place in the standings. That's that top 25 bubble. And Matthew Moose right now two laps down. Andrew Fay Ash, we already mentioned, has retired from this race. Everybody else that's involved in this battle, with the exception of Jordan Erickson, is out on this racetrack right now trying to salvage what they can. So Matthew Moose, if he looks back at the season and he happens to be outside the top 25, this may very well be the race that he points at. Throwing the cars in here, John Gorlinski is your leader on lap number 49. Tim having a little bit of technical issue. He'll be right back, though. Um, Gorlinski, Alfala, Jeremy Allen, Thomas Hazard, and Josh Berry is your top five. Thomas Lewandowski, Brad Wright, Jameson Spees, Patrick Fogel, and Brian Schoenberg rounding out your top ten. And Schoenberg uh, struggling uh, in that last long green flag run. Uh, he's, seen, he's had to see what uh, kind of adjustments he made on his pit stops to get that car back uh centered up lights are out on the safety car and we will go green on lap number 51 field has doubled up we are going back to green flag racing next time by we'll have 50 laps completed the 21 of Gorlinski, the 2 of Ray Alfala, Jeremy Allen, Thomas Hazard, and Josh Berry 
complete your top five, completing your top ten. Thomas Lewandowski, Brad Wright, Jamison Spies, Fogel, and Schoenberg, your top ten. We'll see if Gorlinski gets the jump that he's been getting all night long. Uh, kind of surprising all these drivers. Kind of, it's really surprising that he's been able to do it all night long. But Gorlinski getting uh, really great starts. Alfala, your champion this season, should be up on the wheel and ready for that start. So we'll see how it goes this this restart. Pace car is in. Here comes Gorlinski and the rest of the field. Green flag flies. And he's going to bring Jeremy Allen along with him. Allen side by side with Ray Alfala. The two and the O2 side by side into one. Jeremy Allen has nothing to lose. He wants to win here and he's going to run hard. You can see he was right up on that restart. And he's going to do everything he can to win this race. And uh, Alfala's got nothing to lose either. He is your champion and he can race hard also. But uh, these two guys are going to hang it out. And uh, Jeremy Allen is going to give it 100% every lap. And Thomas Hazard right now runs in fourth. Talked about hanging it out. A little bit loose coming off of corner number four as he fights for that position just behind him. It's a battle for fifth. Here comes Josh Berry on the inside of Thomas Lewandowski. And we're going to bring the 48 along for the ride. Big wiggle from Lewandowski. Lewandowski loose up on the outside line. He's going to lose a couple of spots there. We are seeing the main performance PC drivers coming to the front here. We got uh, Jeremy Allen, Thomas Hazard, and Josh Berry, third, fourth, and fifth, up into the top five right now. Those guys have been struggling most of the season. Brad Wright right back there in seventh. They look like they got their act together and have found something and uh, coming on strong in this last race of the season. Nine and 72 going nose to tail. 72 looking to pick up position at number four. Down the back straight away as the 16 closes in as well. Josh Berry looking to close this season on a high note coming in. He is currently one point behind Chris Main with drop points factored in for a top 10 spot. Everybody getting sorted out now again, trying to run, uh, get some laps in and get sorted out before they make their challenges. So it's a lot of single file going on right now, but uh, after we do a few laps, we'll see a lot of uh, side by side. Actually, we got Brian Schoenberg again, side by side. He's side by side with the 30 of Robert Hall. Hall, who was up in the top five earlier in this race, has fallen back just a little bit. Now she Sheehan trying to work the outside of Hall going through three and four. Jameis Spies on the high side trying to fend off Patrick Baldwin in the 52. Baldwin trying to hang on to what is a top 10 spot right now. Josh Lawton currently sits in position number 11 as he works underneath Jameis and Spies. Spies trying to hold on to a top 10 spot. It's not going to happen. 97 back to position 11. Yeah, he got a little bit loose coming off the corner. The banking falls away on this track quite a bit, quite quickly coming off of corner number two. So if you're a little bit out of sorts coming off of two, you do got to get out of the throttle. Uh, if you got it hooked up, you can stay in the throttle. But uh, if, you're, if you're messed up at all, the banking falls away quite a bit, and uh, you have to lift there a little bit. And that look, looks like what happened to Spees as he came off of two the last time by. Dirty car under pressure from the six, and he's putting pressure on the 55 in the same turn. Brian Schoenberg trying to hold off Robert Hall and Steve Sheehan and just a couple of positions behind. It looks like Connor McKenzie and Brad Davies having a dogfight for a position. Davies was on the outside a couple of moments ago and he's on the outside into the outside wall. Off corner number four, trying to scrape off a little bit more paint. Yeah, I was just going to say that, you know, he's, he's got that thing sorted out since the beginning of the race and he's making his way back up to the field and there he got, got back in the ball a little bit but uh, he's quick he's on the edge he always is but trying to get that second place of points right now uh, trying to work his way through the field he's getting himself in trouble a little bit and Connor McKenzie has a lot to fight for as well if he can stay ahead of Brad Davies that's one point that he gains on that battle to lock himself into the 2012 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. Brad Davies continues to fight back, though, in that number 11 battle for 15th and 16th.
Davies still fighting back there, trying to pick up their spots. Uh, getting sorted out right now. It looks like he's, he's made it up about as far as he can, but Sheehan, just a couple car lengths in front of him, he's a guy that's on the move right now. He's up to the, the uh, 14th spot. Uh, he's, he was pretty far back there early in the race. Now he moves to the inside of Robert Hall as they go down the corner number three, but uh, not able to make that position. That gets back to single file racing. Brian Blackford just a couple of positions behind. 33 makes up a spot on the 06 and the 20 of Jordan Hightower is there as well. Brand new paint scheme for the number 20 of Jordan Hightower, gsracing.net. Sporting the pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month and right now he is in 19th as we have a new third place man up in front of the field and that's Thomas Hazard. Hazard now up in a position where I believe these guys would be tied for points. We'll have to get our statisticians to sort that out there for us a little bit. Actually, yeah, but uh, it looks like Gorlinski and Hazard right now would be tied for that second position. That's how close it is. It's going to come down to a matter of a couple of points if they continue to run up front the way they have been. Now Hazard chases down Ray Alfala. It's about a half second between your second and third place drivers right now, Jeremy Allen and Josh Berry complete your top five as we will complete lap 61 this time by. Right now, John Gorlinski has one win on the season and Thomas Hazard has two. If Gorlinski, if they were to finish the way they are now, Gorlinski would have two wins and Hazard has two wins. So we'd have to go to a different tiebreaker other than wins. And you see Gorlinski on your screen. He's trying to lead the most laps that he can this evening and rock up some bonus points for that as well. It's Gorlinski, Ray Alfala, and Thomas Hazard. Alfala looks to be falling off the pace just a little bit from John Gorlinski, or at least what that 21 car is running at this point. And Thomas Hazard completes your top three, and Hazard and Gorlinski have been putting up pretty similar lap times in the last five laps. Right now, the last lap by Alfala was 0.596 seconds behind Gorlinski. It's only a half a second. Doesn't seem like very much. Hazard uh, about a half second, a little less than a half a second behind Alfala. This time by, we have Alfala 0.629 seconds behind Gorlinski. So Gorlinski stretching out a little bit every lap, and Alfala struggling a little bit as Hazard is gaining on, running about the same lap times as Gorlinski. So Hazard getting a little bit of time on Alfala. Hazard looking to make up that gap in between himself and the Pro Geek Consulting number two as we come across this time by 65. Laps will be started, 64 completed. As we have your leader, John Gorlinski and Ray Alfala. Alfala now back to six tenths of a second. Hazard is definitely closing them and he's bringing some friends, Jeremy Allen and Josh Berry. Yeah, these guys uh, have worked together in the past and uh, still work together quite a bit. But Hazard right now running in that second position again. Jeremy Allen struggling a little bit. He lost a little bit of a spot there, but he's running real good right now in the fourth spot. As you see, uh, Jeremy Allen running right back there on the track as they go in the corner. You see Allen putting it right down low on the track and drifting up a little bit. Right behind them, Josh Berry. These guys, uh, Josh kind of the team leader for these guys, uh, the main performance PC guys anyway. And Josh running in that fifth spot right now. Josh runs a late model for uh, Daryl Earnhardt. And uh, I know he was racing at Martinsville last weekend. And many of these iRacers have the real racing to go on as well. I, I know Nate Monteith was at that late model race as well you look at jim coddell jr he's going to be racing in a late model as well and you'll see jim coddell jr more than likely next season as he tries to battle in the pro season to get a locked in spot to that 2012 nascar iRacing.com series world championship a lot of real world experience in this field richard tyler has retired the 08 from the evening he is done for the 2011 nascar iRacing.com series world championship but the performance that he's had this season should lock himself in to next season. Well, he was about 28 spots, uh, 25 points out of relegation, and that should be enough to keep him in, but, you know, if things fall just right, maybe not, and uh, he'd have to run 
the qualifier in the Pro Series to get back into this uh, series next season, but certainly not the way he wanted to end this season. He had a lot of bad luck all season long. Uh, after a last season where he was uh, your champion and had a great series, you know, a lot of struggles this season, and uh, maybe we'll have a better better season for him next next year. That's the way it goes in racing. Sometimes your luck is good, and sometimes you just can't catch a break. And that's the kind of season it's been for Richard Tyler in the 08 car. So he'll have to come back next season and see if he can battle for that top spot. Gorlinski continues to lead. Ray Alfala, Thomas Hazard in third. All right, um, Tony Gardner uh, in the booth with us tonight. Tony uh, is my boss and uh, president of uh, iRacing. It's good to have you here, Tony, and uh, good race we're having here so far. Hey, Nim. Hi, Tim. Uh, glad to be here. Yeah, great race so far. It, uh, ironically, the uh, three leaders of the series overall are uh, up front tonight again as well. A lot, of, a lot of excitement all season long. And with the introduction of uh, iRacing 2.0 back in August in the middle of the season, it's really, it really tightened up the field and made, made for a lot of good racing throughout that second half of the season. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It came through a twist in the middle of the year, and these guys had to you know, work hard to uh, get used to the new tires. And uh, you know, I think it changed the racing quite a bit for the good. And uh, um, so anyway, yeah, it was uh, a pretty good uh, challenge right in the middle of the year for these guys. A lot of point fights here, a lot of championship fights. You know, we have Ray Alfala has already claimed the, the championship uh, two weeks ago. But uh, we got the battle for second place. We got all these guys fighting for relegation. And, uh, you know, with all these battles going on, uh, the big championship celebration down at Homestead coming up, this is an exciting time of the year for the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship and iRacing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we just uh, we just crowned our uh, IndyCar champion last week. I hate to say that on the NASCAR broadcast, but uh, you know we get you know we roll right into this, and this is real exciting. We're going to meet, meet up with the NASCAR guys out at Homestead and crown Ray the champion, and uh, be sending the emails out this week to all these guys, the top 12 guys who uh, are in the prizes, and uh, and uh, next week we uh, roll right into crowning the champion for our road racing series. So. Real busy, all this stuff, but you know this, this is uh, these, these, this series here is a, a crown jewel, and uh, we're real excited about it. And uh, these guys are unbelievably talented. Now, of course, iRacing 2.0 rolling out. I know you can't let a whole lot of the cat out of the bag, but coming up in October, week 13 comes up. Is there anything that the iRacing community can look forward to as to new innovations coming up at the end of October? Yeah, it's, it's software, so it's hard to say exactly what's in the build. I get myself in trouble sometimes saying that, but uh, there's, there's plenty going on. I mean, we're coming out with sort of another version of the tire model uh, based on the feedback, and we've made some improvements, and uh, we'll have the hopefully the new t tire model on some other cars. Right now, it's not on every car in the service. It's only on about seven or eight of them out of 30 cars. So um, anyway, that, that's going on. Uh, we're working on a lot of... The, a lot of uh, internal things, frame rates and, and race control flags, diff different scenarios, changing some things based on feedback. You know, instead of end of the line penalties, uh, um, you know, stop and hold penalties based on feedback from the drivers, things like that. But you know, there's a lot of a lot of new things as usual. Some, a lot of things graphically, uh, a lot of things going on in the pits. We're adding more wagons to you know these NASCAR races. Uh, hopefully, this build new pit sounds, new new spotter sounds, crowd noise, ambient noises, and working on driver changes, speed racing, endurance racing, I'm not sure that that's not going to make it in this build, but that's a big ongoing project, you know, team racing and driver driver changes and things like that, but um, a lot of stuff going on for sure. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for stopping in here and talking to us. I'm sure we'll talk more towards the end of this race, but uh, battle on the track still continuing. John Gorlinski out front by it. now a second margin over Ray Alfala. Ray feeling a big challenge now by Thomas Hazard. Hazard looking to the inside, coming off of corner number two, going down the back straightaway. Hazard's going to have to fall back in line. And this is the battle we've been seeing for most of this season. We've had the two of Ray Alfala and the nine of Thomas Hazard battling for the top of the point standings, and now they battle it out for position number two in the final race of the season. 
Jeremy Allen closes in on this battle as well, making it a three-car battle for the runner-up spot as we complete lap 77. A foul wash is off the track just a little bit in one. He gets a lower line coming out of corner number two. Hazard gets a little closer going into one. A little bit loose coming off corner number two. Again, the banking falls away really quick there. And you got to be really on your toes and on the wheel as you come off corner number two there. Hazard looking to the inside. He's running a little bit lower line. And he does best coming off corner number four as he gets a run down the straightaway. Not able to make a challenge this time. But that, that appears to be the spot where Hazard is strong. is coming off of four and getting in the one right now as he does get alongside of Alfala through one and two. Alfala opened the door, gave him a little bit of room to operate. The nine could not put it in there. So the nine will fall back behind the number two of Ray Alfala for the moment as Thomas Hazard seems to get that good run into the corner. And as you mentioned, him trying to get that good run off is really where that number two and the number nine are trying to get that push to the start finish line. As you see it there, the 0-2 of Jeremy Allen. It looks like his car just gets a little bit better as the run progresses as well. Yeah, and we are deep into this run. Uh, we are almost, this time by, we'll be 30 laps into this run as we uh, started this run on lap number 51. Here we're getting ready to start lap number 81. So a lot of wear on these tires. These, the, the setups under these cars are you know, working as the best they can or not working so well. And right now you're seeing who's got the good setups in the top. Uh, three cars here, the uh, second, third, and fourth place car, very, very close in competition here. And right back from them, you saw Barry has dropped back, and he's fallen into the clutches of Lewandowski a little bit. So he's struggling struggling a bit under this long green flag run. But this is the longest front run of the day, 30 laps now, long now, and we'll have to start thinking about uh, pit stops here in 20 laps or so. Yeah, we're in the second half of this race right now. You really need to start thinking about that pit stop when you make it and salvage yourself and try to set yourself up for the second half or the dash to the finish of this event. It looked like the 16 of Thomas Lewandowski, as you mentioned him, then was coming up to the front and was catching Josh Berry. It looks like he's fallen off the 72 just a little bit, but Lewandowski has looked strong under these last few laps. Yeah, Lewandowski is either getting strong or Barry's just falling back. Uh, Lewandowski not really catching the cars of the pack in front of Barry, but Barry has definitely dropped back from that pack. So it might be just the fact that Barry's falling back in the clutches of Lewandowski here just a little bit. Brad Wright, right behind Lewandowski, running a great, great race so far. Brad Wright uh, has always uh, been very strong all season long and very consistent. Got caught up in a big wreck there at Phoenix, but pretty much all season long has uh, been running well enough to keep him up into the uh, top 10 in points right now, right being showed in that fifth spot in points. So Brad Wright has pretty much a lock on the fifth spot in points as long as he doesn't have any d disasters here at the end of this race. Fifty-five and six battling for position is just in front of them. Jamison Spees and the 40 of Josh Lawton battle for position number 10. We mentioned a little bit earlier on Brian Schoenberg is celebrating his birthday. I did have a note from Mark to wish him a happy birthday. So happy birthday to Brian Schoenberg. And we also want to send out a happy birthday to Paul Strickland Jr. If you're familiar with the iRacing service, you know Vidane Racing, one of the many leagues on iRacing. He also runs Xlander Design Solutions. Want to wish Paul a very happy birthday as well as Sheehan has his hands completely full. Here comes Sheehan. Sheehan to the inside, looking at the 55, side by side, contact made, and Schoenberg up the track. Yeah, Sheehan got quite, got into turn one pretty hard and slid off the track and kind of doored Sheehan there in the middle of the corner just a little bit. Sheehan uh, trying to make that pass a bit harder, but uh, didn't want to give him room. But those guys doing a great job, as we see, as we've seen all day long, Schoenberg's getting uh, roughed up just a little bit uh, as we saw him make those spectacular saves early on. And maybe that's just a result of battling very hard for the position. But she had definitely got, got a little bit tight right there. Got a little bit uh, little bit into the door of Schoenberg. Schoenberg doing a great job of saving that car again. And it will open the door up a little bit for Robert Hall. Robert Hall runs the 30 in position number 14, just behind Brian Schoenberg. Great run for Robert Hall. Fantastic qualifying effort for car number 30 of Robert Hall, who qualified into this race in position number four. Just in front of them, though, it is Joshua Lawton trying to hold off Jamison Spees for position number 10. 
as it looks like we're going to lap Jesse Atchison here in just a few moments' time, or at least this battle for 10th will. Josh Lawton, fantastic run. Jamison Spees as well has had an up and down season. Yeah, Spees has struggled a little bit this season. This is one of his better runs up in the 11th spot, and uh, we'll see if he can not uh, put together a little bit better finish. But Spees has had some good runs uh, during the season, but uh, struggled to keep, uh, you know, to, to bring home that uh, final finishing spot. 97 all over the back of the number 40, the Simboot sponsored ride, looking to fend off Jamison Spees for position at number 10 as they run down the back straightaway, lap number 88 being worked on the board. Joshua Lofton heads the pit road. Looks like we may have had one car spinning. I see Josh Connors on pit road. He may have had to lock him up to come onto pit road as uh, Joshua Lawton now getting service to his race car as we have him coming down onto pit road to get service. There's a number of drivers. This is a bit different uh, uh, pit entry than we have most races. Uh, Brad Davies still struggling. He uh, tried to get down the pit road, got on the apron, and got into the grass and spun his car trying to make his pit stop and uh, he took a long tour through the grass and had all kinds of problems and again Brad Davies uh, just having a mess of a race here tonight and you'll see a replay pop up on your screen of the Whiskey River Chevrolet trying to get onto pit road and it's been one of those seasons for Brad Davies he was involved in the battle for second coming into this evening but after finishing runner-up last season Brad Davies compared to last season, Nim, has had a little bit of a tough sled. Yeah, you know, he's had some great runs all season long. He did get uh, disconnected once where he had that uh, poor finish there. And for the most part, he's been very solid. Uh, he very rarely makes mistakes. And he's, he's had some, uh, you know, issues this year with Rex, just like everybody else or whatever. But for the most part, he's very strong. And the mistakes he's making today are very uncharacteristic for Brad Davies. Stephen Gilbert and Nolan Scott are now on to pit road as they get service to their race cars. Your top five continue to stay out on the racetrack. Gorlinski, Alfala, Hazard, Barry, and Lewandowski are your top five as we work on lap number 92 as Josh Barry is now on to pit road as I say that the main performance PC Chevrolet Impala coming down to the attention of his crew to get service on the race car. These pit stops happening a little bit earlier than I thought they would, uh, coming in about 40 laps after our last caution flag, although not everybody pitted on the last caution flag, but they are splitting the run in half to the checker flag here right now. We're working lap number 93, 133 laps to uh, in this race, so about 40 laps to go the next time they cross the start-finish line. So they are probably splitting, splitting this run in half and trying to get the most out of their tires. Brad Wright is in, and talk about a rookie that's had a fantastic season. Brad Wright in the number 48 car coming into this evening with drop points factored in. He's fifth, so anything that happens here this evening is pretty much gravy as, Bre as Ray Alfala is now coming on to pit road. Brad Wright has had a fantastic season. We'll see how many laps. John Gorlinski waits uh, to come in. Jeremy Allen signaling he's headed for pit road as Gorlinski stays out. You do have to enter the pit road here from turn three. You cannot enter from turn four. If you enter from turn four, you will get a black flag penalty. So everybody must enter from turn number three, and they must make their way around the apron through turn, turn, turns number one and two um, so before they can re-enter the track on the back straightaway. Thomas Hazard on to pit road, and you mentioned that pit road speed there, Nim. Coming on to pit road, you can enter in corner number three. You have to enter in corner number three, but really you can give it hell around that corner on that access road, but you have to come down to the 55 mile an hour speed limit when you hit that line. And I saw Thomas Hazard really pushing the boundaries coming through three and four on that access road. Yep, John Gorlinski and Patrick Baldwin, uh, card number, position number one and two are now headed towards pit road and on pit road. And you're right, uh, uh, Tim, this, you know, the, the entry... Uh, that flat part of going around corner number three and four getting on the pit road it's very tricky you know you're running that banking all race long and you can push it all race long you get down that flat 
apron come around one and two, it's very difficult not to just get some tires over there in the grass and do what Brad Davies did and just mess up your pit stop and your race totally. But uh, Davies on pit road, I'm sorry, um, Grilinski on pit road, he's taken two tires and he's off. And also on pit road, the third place car right behind him, um, uh, McKenzie, I believe that was, is on and off also. Or Baldwin. Jameson Spies is now your leader in the number 97-55. Brian Schoenberg runs in a second and a third place will belong to Robert Hall. We'll see if any of those top three do decide to come down this time by. Looks like Spies will bypass Pitt Road as will Schoenberg and Robert Hall. That will be your top three and the first driver it looks like will cycle through will be Ray Alfala. Alfala in the two just behind your top three and wheeling that race car trying to get around the 30. Yeah, he looks to the inside of the 30 going down to corner number one, and the 30 car will let him go as they go through one and two right there. That's Robert Hall up on the outside. Gorlinski down the inside also making his pass, but Ray Alfala trying to get that get that spot, and he uh, actually had a better pit stop. Obviously, uh, he made his pit stop earlier, so he's going to have better tires as he came out. Now that Gorlinski's right behind him, Gorlinski should have a little bit better tires throughout the race, but 21 looking to the inside, coming down the front straightaway as they get their lap back from your second place car, Brian Schoenberg. Side by side for that position right now is 11th place. If this all cycles through under green, this will be the battle for the lead eventually. Alfala and Gorlinski going side by side. And it just shows how hard some of these guys are going and how maybe a little bit sensitive these guys are going. As the 97 to Jamison Spies dives onto Pitt Road. John Gorlinski, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, they had about a six-tenths of a second lead on Ray Alfala before the pit stops began. Alfala came out two-tenths of a second up on Gorlinski, and now, as you see it, John Gorlinski is now back out in front of Ray Alfala. That's definitely a strong pass by Gorlinski. Gorlinski did, does have a few laps fresher tires, but still a very strong pass on Ray Alfala. And uh, Gorlinski, that right there may have been the pass for the race. Definitely are looking to lead most laps and may have already locked that up as far as most laps led. That gets him another point on the second place runner of Thomas Hazard. So Hazard basically going to have to finish right behind or beat Gorlinski he, if he has any chance at that second position in points. And remember, folks, this is a $2,000 battle. Second place gets paid $3,500. Third place in points gets paid $1,500. So there's $2,000 on the line here. And right now, Gorlinski seems to have it at hand. Brian Schoenberg is your leader in car number 55. That will change, Joe, as here comes the inside sim racing. Jamison Spees racing number 55 of Schoenberg down on pit road. You look at Thomas Hazard here. He's fighting right now. He's in the, uh, let's see as they go by, the ninth place. He's in the 12th position right now. He's fighting with Thomas Lewandowski and Jeremy Allen. These guys who were running up around the top five before this pit stop cycle happened. That's probably where they'll come back out. But Hazard may have had, may have lost actually a couple spots on that round of pit stops because he was up in about the fourth position before the pit stop started, maybe even the third spot. Right now, Jeremy Allen in front of him, Thomas uh, Lewandowski in front of him, and Josh Berry uh, up in front of him. And that, those guys were behind uh, Hazard before they made that last pit stop. So Hazard may be having a little bit of trouble on that last pit stop. Brian Blackford is scored as your leader in the number 33. Has yet to make his pit stop. Jean Costa is scored in second, and Costa looking to pick up a point to lead a lap here, and with that top 25 bubble in play, that's gonna be key. Here comes Blackford down onto Pitt Road, the triad long here, number 33, gonna come down to the attention of his crew. Jean Costa will also come down in the 96. Thirty-three having a little bit of trouble going on the pit road there. It's very tough getting on the pit road as we saw. Uh, he'll, he'll be on pit road now, and he'll cycle back out into the race. But right now, your battle for up front, it looks like Gorlinski has it in hand as he's uh, pulling ahead, putting a couple lap cars down, and uh, about another second back to Alfala now. And one of those cars was your leader, or would have been your lead car, Justin Lowry in the 66. And Lowry was trying to lead that one lap to get himself the extra point because Lowry sits 29th coming in to this evening's racing action. He didn't get that point, though. So Justin Lowry, tough break for him as he was passed up by John Gorlinski as Gorlinski should be scored as your leader this time by as we will complete 104 laps.
in that round of pit stops, the guy on the move or the guy with the best pit, pit stop with the crew on the move might be Josh Berry. Berry was uh, about fifth or sixth spot before that round of pit stops. Now he'll be up into the third position as everything cycles through as Justin Lowry now signals that he's headed to pit road. So that'll move Barry up in the sixth or up in the third position. Jeremy Allen will be in the fourth spot. Thomas Lewandowski in fifth and Thomas Hazard in the sixth spot. Coming down to under 30 laps to go in the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship in 2011. Gorlinski leads Ray Alfala by six tenths of a second as they put the platypus one lap down and Jesse Atchison in the number 28. Josh Berry runs in third, Jeremy Allen and Thomas Lewandowski duke it out for fourth and fifth. Hazard right behind them. He's going to want to get past these guys. He needs to get up in that second spot. He needs to challenge Gorlinski if he wants to spot that second place in points. Um, it's That's a tough a tall order, though, as uh, Gorlinski and Alfala are very, very strong. And uh, Hazard right now fighting a lot of aerodynamic effects from the cars in front of him trying to get by. But Hazard still has a chance. He's, uh, he is putting in a good run here today. Sixth position in this field, very strong run. Uh, I lost a couple spots on that pit stop, but he does need to get up in front of these guys. Two guys behind him looking to go. Steve Sheehan and the TaxSlayer.com Chevrolet all over the back bumper of the 52 of Patrick Baldwin. Baldwin looking to hang on to position number seven and hang on to a top 10 finish. Steve Sheehan looking to go to the front. He sees three drivers in front of him that could put himself in the top five, but he's got to get past this number 52 first. Baldwin, still a newcomer to this series. Uh, doing a doing a great great job running up in the seventh position right now. Remember, he started second, but he's been strong all day long, getting a lot of experience, getting ready for the Pro Series and next se next season's uh, next season's uh, NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. And they're not too far behind this battle for position number four, which is led up by Jeremy Allen. So we could very well have a five-car battle here in just a few moments' time for position number four as Baldwin and Sheehan continue to make time and track down fourth, fifth, and sixth as they run down the back straightaway. We are working lap 109 of 133. Yep, Sheehan now right up there Pat, um, to challenge Baldwin. And we've seen earlier in the race, Sheehan's willing to rough you up a little bit to try to get by. Uh, at least that's the way it's worked out uh, in the past couple of weeks. But Sheehan now looks to the inside of Baldwin as they go down the corner number one. Sheehan down low, Baldwin Let's him go, Baldwin, I think, trying to gain the, the respect of these drivers as he knows he's going to be here next season trying to fight with them. Sheehan gets by, and that'll move Steve Sheehan up in the seventh position. And now what does Sheehan have in the remaining 23 laps of this race as Baldwin dives it in deep behind Sheehan, trying to keep pace with the Tax Slayer car. 23 to go this time by. What does Steve Sheehan have as the yellow is out? Car number 51 in trouble, Patrick Fogel. Um, Fogel in that relegation battle. Fogel comes into this race 22nd in points with the drop. Only, uh, only it looks like about 10 points, 15 points maybe out of that, uh, missing the series for next season, but uh, in trouble right now. And in trouble with him is Matthew Moose in the number 14. And Matthew Moose scored his 29 laps behind the pace. And it looked like they were trying to lap the 14. The 51 makes a little contact. And the 97 to Jamison Spies, nowhere to go, but into the back bumper of the TC's custom die cast, number 51, and sends him for a ride into the inner field. And he's barely going to slap the wall on the rear end, but that might knock out some suspension pieces back there. Yeah, it looks like coming off the corner, Fogel got, uh, was trying to pass Moose, Moose down the inside as Moose was running up on the high side there. And Fogel got a little bit loose. He had to chase the car up the track a little bit. That got him into the side of, uh, of the Matthew Moose car, and Spies had nowhere to go as uh, Fogel just, you know, just his car stepped out on him. He had to catch it, and there was a guy behind who had nowhere to go, and that sent Fogel around. So one of those racing deals, those guys are on the edge all the time trying to make up time. No matter where you are in this field, first to last, they're all running very hard. Looks like most of your leaders have bypassed pit road so it looks like they will stay out on the racetrack steve sheehan though is this is surprising steve sheehan is coming on to pit road after being so strong on that run the tax slayer chevrolet is coming in and he will more than likely be back outside 
probably the top 15 when we get going again. I'm, I'm not sure if, if that's a good move. Of course, that's why we're up here and not in the pass or in the driver's seat, eh? Well, Steve, Steve's made some questionable calls uh, this season that put him back in the pack. You know, that got him in trouble last time in Phoenix. And, you know, he, he just gets himself, he'll be running up front, and he'll get himself back in the pack where some trouble happens. He wants... Right now, he wanted those right side tires, and we do have uh, a bit of a uh, race to go, a little bit uh, more than 20 laps, uh, 20 laps next time by. So, uh, you know, 20 laps to go with these tires not having a ton of wear, Tim, I'm not sure that this is such a great idea. Let's take this opportunity to step away for just a few moments and take a quick breather because I have a feeling we're going to need it in the final 20 laps of this race. We'll have less than 20 to go when we come back to the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship at Homestead. iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com. And welcome back to the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship, round 18 of 18 at the Homestead Miami Speedway, the season finale. Set to go back to green flag racing, John Gorlinski has dominated this race, but Ray Alfala, Josh Berry, Jeremy Allen, and Thomas Lewandowski, among others, trying to steal it away from the 21 of Gorlinski. The pace car will head off this time by, and we'll be back to racing. Gorlinski has been the Master of the restart here this evening as well with the few restarts that we have had. The Wrangler Chevrolet has been solid. Ray Alfala looking to hang with them here. 115 will be completed at the line. The Ford Mustang pace car will dive into the infield. And Gorlinski will be back in control of the field. Green flag flies. Gorlinski gets a pretty good jump this time again as he has already shown. Ray Alfala fighting up there for the second position. Josh Perry knows that this is the best time for him to make a battle for that second position, and he's trying to do it, but unable to make a challenge. He falls back to position number three, as it looks like the battle will be for fifth. Here comes Thomas Hazard on the upside of Thomas Lewandowski. Hazard trying to straddle that fine line on the high side and trying to keep that momentum rocking. On the outside line, the nine will lose position to the 16. 
Yeah, he falls back in line. He'll try to make that uh, battle off of turn number two, but not unable to do so. Baldwin there again right behind Hazard running in the seventh spot. Again, a great race for him tonight as we look back at the pack. The 30 car of Robert Hall trying to make up some positions up on the outside, trying to make his way into the top ten. And that's Brian Blackford to his inside, the 33 Triad Lawn Care Chevrolet, trying to make up a couple of spots and finish off the season with a top 10 run. He's got Schoenberg right in front of him now, double five, double three. They battle for P10. Connor McKenzie got really loose off of the corner, uh, corner number four last time by. That let Nolan Scott up on his uh, outside, and it looks like Nolan Scott will take that position going down the back straightaway. Thomas has are going to lose a spot to the 40 of Josh Lawton. Now here comes the 55 and 48 cars. 48 trying to get underneath the number nine. Side by side for position number six. As they continue to go at it, Hazard is falling back like a rock. And right now, Hazard, check that. That's for position at number eight and nine as Hazard is now back to nine. Yeah, this battle is grouping the cars up right behind them, and this is where we could get in trouble. We're in the last 20 laps, so the last 15 laps of this race, and this is where everybody's going for it, trying to get stuff done, as we have Schoenberg looking at the inside of Brad Wright going into corner number three. The gloves are off now. Less than 15 laps remaining. Schoenberg going to try to pick up a spot here on the 48 of Brad Wright. That's the battle for position number nine as Brian Blackford looks in as well. We may be three wide racing back here just behind them. Connor McKenzie on the high side, Nolan Scott on the extreme outside, Steve Sheehan in the six on the inside, trying to put that number 10 in the rear view mirror as he gets loose off two. Yeah, Sheehan's trying to use out the door on that 10 car a little bit as he's done with a lot of cars all day long, but uh, he's got those new tires and trying to work his way up through the field and try to push Connor McKenzie out there a little bit. McKenzie was having none of it and he'll hold on to that battle. Florian Goddard on the inside line of the 06 and Nolan Scott as they dance side by side for position at number 15 and 16. And those are three drivers that are involved in that top 25 bubble is the iRacing TV number four. Puts it sideways at a corner number two. Florian Goddard and lose that position to Nolan Scott. Florian having a great run here today. It's good to see him up there battling for the position. He had a great qualifying run uh, earlier on, but uh, Florian having a good run today. It's good to see that team or that car up there. And he's also the one that makes the intro videos that you see coming into each of the broadcasts. He moves back underneath Nolan Scott as they battle side by side. Greg Spears in the 90 is there as well as we battle for third and fourth. Josh Berry trying to hold off Jeremy Allen and Thomas Lewandowski up in front of the field. Barry running that low line. All three of these guys running the low line. Jeremy Allen looking low, coming off front of him. He's not going to have any uh, run down the front straight with Lewandowski trying to get a run on Jeremy Allen. Not able to do so this time by, but looks like the preferred line for uh, the 72 car, Josh Barry, is a little bit off of that first lane. And it looks like everybody's kind of running in the same tire tracks as Thomas Hazard's falling back to the eighth spot right now. Gorlinski up the first. And it looks like Gorolinski's got a lock on that second position in points right now and that $3,500. Jeremy Allen looking at Josh Berry for position number three. Here comes Thomas Lewandowski on the back end of Jeremy Allen. And now to the inside, the 16 of Thomas Lewandowski trying to pick up one more spot on Jeremy Allen as they work through the corner. Ten laps remaining. Jeremy Allen not making it easy on Lewandowski as they go down the corner number one. Allen slides up the track now. Patrick Baldwin looks to the inside of Allen. Allen tries to throw a block, but he can't do it because Patrick Baldwin, Baldwin is right there. Baldwin down to the inside. Allen up on the outside. He'll have momentum, but those guys scrape a little bit coming off corner number four. And it's going to close in Josh Lawton for the position as well. Josh Lawton looking to make a top five spot before this season is done. Patrick Baldwin. Hot on the heels of Jeremy Allen. That's the battle for fifth as we close in on the checkered flag of this NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship season. Lawton looks to the inside of Baldwin going down to corner number three. Baldwin right there. He must have to make sure he has to stay high because Lofton does have position. Baldwin gets a little bit loose coming off corner number four, and that'll let Lofton have the run down the front straightaway. 
Josh Lawton will take position number six as he closes in now on Jeremy Allen, but he's got to hold off Patrick Fogel. Here comes the nine, a Thomas Hazard. Hazard right now still trying to maintain position two in the points, but with Gorlinski leading, it's slowly slipping away. But we got to keep in mind as well, Nim, he's got to keep in front of Brad Davies. Brad Davies is one lap down right now, still in this race. So Thomas Hazard has to keep the fenders clean in order to keep third. Yeah, definitely. Definitely want to keep the fenders clean to keep third as there is uh, $1,500 compared to $1,000 for the fourth position. So he definitely wants to hold on to that $1,500 if he can. And still, you never know what's going to happen up front. So he wants to be there just in case something does happen up there. But these guys battling on. We're, we're within uh, six or seven laps to go with the finish of the race. Your leader is John Gorlinski. He leads by a half second over Ray Alfala. Josh Berry is about a half second or so behind Ray Alfala for position number two. And then you have Thomas Lewandowski closing in on Berry. That may, very may well be a battle for position number three. It's easier for me to say. Jeremy Allen is in fifth place right now and closing in on these drivers as well. We work lap number 128 of 133 as we go down the back straightaway. Yeah, John Gorlinski definitely has this field under control right now. Ray Alfala has second place under control. Battle is for the third spot as Barry runs up the track a little bit, and that allows Lewandowski to get a run down the front straightaway. Lewandowski is right there, looks to the inside, going down the corner number one. Barry has none of it. He moves to the outside. That allows Lewandowski down to the inside, but Barry should have the run coming off the high side of the corner. And Thomas Lewandowski roars the Wrangler Chevrolet to position number three. Josh Berry back to position number four. Now can Berry hold on in these remaining laps to fend off Jeremy Allen. Allen is starting to charge in the Mason Baker designs. Chevrolet Impala as they come past this time, four laps remaining. Now Jeremy Allen sets his sights on Josh Berry going down to the corner number one. Allen gets into that corner and gains a couple of car lengths on Barry as they go through one and two as Lewandowski stretches out that lead on Barry. And as they battle for that spot, Josh Lawton is trying to fend off Patrick Baldwin just behind this battle. Two guys having great runs as we have the 33 and 30 as well battling Robert Hall up the racetrack. Here comes the six of Steve Sheehan. Sheehan underneath with those fresh tires. He's going to run out of time, Nim, but what a run back to the front for Sheehan. Yeah, he's got those fresh tires on, and that put him back up into the 11th spot. Still a long way to go and uh, just not enough time with the amount of laps left on, the, on that caution period and his last pit stop. Uh, he'll be fighting to try to get back up in the top 10, but that's about the best he's going to do. Back up uh, to the fourth position, Barry still uh, holding just a couple of car lengths over Jeremy Allen. And they just put Pedro Mojica one lap down, and I believe that's the only piece of lap traffic they are going to see before the end of this race. I see the 55 and 33 are fairly close as well as they battle for position, but we are under two laps to go. This time by, we will see the white flag out for John Gorlinski. We're coming down to the final lap, Nim. Yeah, Gorlinski has the lead in hand, and he has second place in points wrapped up. This finish is worth $2,000 plus, $3,500 in total, but a $2,000 difference in uh, second and third place in points, and he's doing a great job running in that first spot, gaining most laps and holding on, doing everything he can for that second spot in points. And you know what, Tim? It's all been since iRacing 2.0 came out. John Gorlinski has had a great handle on iRacing 2.0, and that's moved him up in the points. Win the poll. Check. Lead the most laps. Check. John Gorlinski is about to take second place in the point standings out of corner number four. The 21 of John Gorlinski goes to victory at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Second belongs to the number two of Ray Alfala, and he is your champion for the 2011 campaign. Thomas Lewandowski in third, Josh Berry in fourth, and Jeremy Allen complete your top five. What a season, what a race is Brian Blackford. I believe may have just lost it off corner number two on the cooldown lap. Nice save with a little bit of aid of the wall. You're two, uh, your race champion and your season champion scrubbing uh, doors and uh, putting some paint marks all over the cars coming through three and four, congratulating each other. And they'll both go down the front straight away and probably do some donuts here uh, for the audience and celebrate their win and their season as John Gorlinski has let Ray Alfala know he is going to be a contender for next season. 
as they light it up on the front straightaway. This is John Gorlinski's second win of the 2011 campaign. He won just a couple of weeks ago, and, and with that brand new tire model, iRacing 2.0 has been fairly kind to the Wrangler team and John Gorlinski as Ray Alfala lights it up as well. The Pro Geek Consulting Chevrolet has been solid all season long, and I believe that was the, the 20 as well of Jordan Hightower doing some burnouts there on the front straightaway as well and ripping up the grass at the Homestead Miami Speedway. Hey, they won't need it. It's the end of the season. We are going to take a quick break, step away, and begin to ready for the post-race show where we will talk to your top five finishers about this race and also the season as well. That was for the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. Don't go away. The post-race show is coming up. iRacing.com is the premier online racing simulation featuring head-to-head -head competition on your PC. Race from your home PC, competing on the world's best real-world cars and tracks. Thousands of race fans and scores of pro racers like Dale Jr. and Justin Wilson are already racing at iRacing. Experience the thrill of victory yourself and go racing today at iRacing.com. Welcome back to the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship where John Gorlinski has just walked away with the win. Total domination, 124 of 133 laps led by John Gorlinski. Ray Alfala comes home in second, Thomas Lewandowski in third, Josh Berry, Jeremy Allen 
complete your top five. Let's go down trackside to Victory Lane, where Nim Cross has caught up with your winner, driver number 21, John Gorlinski. Down here in Victory Lane with John Gorlinski. John, I racing 2.0 ever since... Uh... Ever since August, uh, you, you seem to have had everything uh, tightened up with this uh, new tire model and have been running great. You've won this race, dominated Homestead, got second in points. Tell us how it all went. Uh, you know, I didn't put a lot of time in Homestead until really late last night and early this morning. and or Not early this morning, after I got home from work today. And I was missing something and I was getting frustrated and Tom Lundowski swooped in to run a couple laps and show me that I was just driving the track wrong and he ended up sending me a setup and I tweaked on it and just really took off after that and this was only maybe two hours before the race so and I got my hopes up and put down a nice solid qualifying lap and I just knew it was hard to pass his home set and if I could play the right strategies I could just win the race you know I I wouldn't have dream that I could have dominated the race like that, especially at Homestead. It's a very tough track to really get a handle on. This has got to give you a lot of confidence going in the next season. I mean, uh, the second half of this season, you you were pretty much the guy to be you and Ray up front uh, most of the races, and uh, you're coming out with two wins here in the second half of the season. Uh, this has got to give you a lot of confidence going forward. It really does. Um, before the new tire mall came out, I... I knew I was typically like a fifth to seventh place car. I could always squeak out a couple extra spots. And, uh, you know, the beginning of the season, I had a couple. I mean, I missed Bristol. That's gonna, That might haunt me. I haven't seen the final points. Um, but I had some pretty solid races. It's just, it's funny. Every every crash got caught up in this season, every big one, uh, I think I bounced off of Ray. Like, we were always both in the same crashes. It was pretty wild. Um, so a new tire ball came out, and I ran real well at Atlanta, and, I, I think I had four top threes in a row. At Phoenix last week, I just got caught up in a mess. I had another really great car there, and then today was just I I can't I surprised myself with today's run. Oh, you're definitely strong. Led all laps. Uh, we congratulate you on your victory. Who makes it work for your team? Um. Well, first I'll say I had my parents. I know they're home watching, and I think my there might be a chance my grandparents watch this too. So hi to them if they are. Uh, thank Wrangler, Whiskey River, Tex Slayer, everybody at the Drill Isle, Dale Jr., uh, Tom Lundowski, because he, he hooked it up tonight, and I might have been in trouble if it wasn't for him. Great job on your winner, the Dominator here at Homestead. And we're going to throw it up to Tim Terry, who's got uh, your second-place finisher, this year's champion, and a special guest. And before we get to that championship thing, we'll talk to Ray Alfala about finishing in the second place position here this evening. Ray, fantastic race for the team here at Homestead. Yeah, Tim, um, you know, I, I did all I could to, to catch uh, John there at the end, but I, uh, I, I was missing a little bit, a little bit of grip somewhere. Uh, I may have been, it may have been the arrow a little, you know, maybe. So, uh, you know, when I exited pit road on the green flag stops, I pitted before him just to see if I could, if I could get him into pressuring speeding up at road or something and uh, I actually came out ahead of him but I uh, just couldn't couldn't hold him off on whether it was new tires or I think he was just faster no matter what so I uh, wasn't really very happy to see that last yellow as uh, I was I was struggling on the restarts all, all night and uh, but I was able to hold off uh, Barry there and uh, came home second so it's a uh, you know I, want, well, I wanted to go out winning but but uh, second will, will be just fine this season. And you talked about the importance of restarts. Once John Gorlinski got out in front, it, it seemed like it was all but over. But you had a, a couple of restarts there where you could keep up with John Gorlinski, but it seemed like the inside line really was the place to be on those restarts. Yeah, I kept uh, I kept spinning my tires for some reason. It, it, uh, I kept pedaling the, the throttle maybe for no reason because other people just kept uh, stayed in it and would beat me. And, uh, I mean, at the beginning of the race, I started eighth, and I was able to... That's actually, I think, the only good start I had all race was the start of the race, in which uh, I was able to get a few spots there. And then when uh, when Brad and then Tom, I think, made contact in turn one, I also gained spots there. And then I was able to get by Tom on a restart and pretty much just put my they put me in in third. And then on the following restart, I was able to get to second. That's pretty much where I ran all, all race. Um, you know, it's it's, uh, it's a lot harder to pass a leader for obvious reasons. Is you know, he's a leader, he's the fastest guy, and also because of the arrow push and stuff. So, 
Uh, you know, overall, it was a good night, though. And now we're going to hand the microphone over to Nick Wren from NASCAR to present Ray Alfala with the 2011 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. Ray, I wish I had the trophies in my hand uh, for you right now, but uh, they're on their way. They're being built by Jostens. Uh, your ring's in the works. Uh, we're excited to uh, actually, with you, meet you again. I met you last year down in Miami. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopefully getting that big group of guys back together and uh, enjoying the race probably. I know that's uh, your home track, but probably from a little bit of a different vantage point for you this year and certainly now with your new title in tow. So congratulations. Great season, man. Um, you're very consistent. You ran a really, really consistent season. I think you bobbled there a bit at Phoenix, but who doesn't have those? But uh, you raced your way to a nice cushion, a nice lead, and uh, congratulations, man. Yeah, it's great to have you as our champion this year. Thanks, Nick. Uh, you know, I've had uh, I've had two weeks to let it sink in, so I'm not in, in uber shock right now at the, the championship. So, uh, you know, tonight was probably the most relaxed I've ever been for a race and probably the most relaxed I'll ever be for a race unless unless I clinch next next year again at Phoenix or something. But, um, you know, I just I, I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed being able to, to not come into Homestead with all the pressure, even though it may have made for some bad TV. <laughs> you know, I really don't don't care about that. Uh, you know, the entire season just went, went. I wouldn't say perfect because there, I can actually still improve on some things, and which I totally uh, am hoping I can do next year. Um, last year, I made a lot of mistakes, which I capitalized on this season. And even even this season, even if you win the championship, you still look back and make a few mistakes. Um, there were a few races where, um, you know, I think back and I could have definitely done things differently, and. I could have finished even better, so I look into those over the off season and enjoy these four months off. And but before those four months, obviously, you know, get to go to Homestead and have a good time. Now I see that Richard Towler has come in here as well. Richard, first of all, tough way to end the season, but nevertheless, top twenty-five next season's going to look bright for the zero eight team, isn't it? Yeah. This race just sums up my season, but first I've got to say a huge congrats to Ray on, you know, he's just, he just ran really strong this year, he's been really consistent, he's done a really good job, and, you know, as he said, he learned from last year, where he could barely finish a race, so, he's, and I've kind of taken his spot from him on that one, but yeah, yeah, it was a tough night, but, you know, we'll be the top 25, and it means we can take some time off and think about next year. They talked about learning from last year. Last season, it was you in Ray Alfala's shoes. You got to be the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship and go to the Homestead Miami Speedway. Any pointers for Ray coming up in November? Um, he's going to have a lot of fun. That's all I can say. And he's going to get a lot of attention, so it's going to be great for him. And it'll be a really unique experience for him. So, you know, I'm, so, um, yeah, I'm just... You know, really happy that he gets to experience that as well, because it was great for me last year. So, yeah, he's gonna have a ball. Yeah, I get I get to ask Richard all the questions. <laughs> I'll be asking him a lot of questions before then. And I'm sure he'll be happy to answer, Richard. Before we let you go this evening, anybody you want to say hello to or any final thoughts from this season? The mic is all yours. Yeah, I just want to say thanks. You know, to my friends NASCAR, iRacing. You know, my sponsors, Dale and Julia. You know for not firing me for being terrible and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. And just uh, thanks to everyone else for watching and uh, sponsors and all that stuff. So thanks, you know. And also thanks to you guys as well for making the broadcast absolutely, you know, they'll be really good this year. So, you know, well done on that front. And that's Richard Tyler, last season's champion. And before we let you go this evening, race second place this evening and the champion for the 2011 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. The mic is all yours. Anybody out there you want to say hello to or any final thanks from this 2011 championship season? Well, you know, obviously got to give a shout out to my sponsor, uh, Proview Consulting. Uh, Matt Sadel came on board halfway through the year and I think I DNF the first race. So <laughs> it's it's pretty cool to to come home with, with the championship. I'm sure he'll be happy. Also, uh, J.D. Laird for painting up every car. I pretty much uh, tell him. You know, I, I usually just give him a few days warning, and he'll just whip something up and paint it. So uh, 
you know, obviously, I also got to thank PSR TV. I'll, I'll watch this race later tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy watching each and every race. Uh, you know, I got to thank iRacing and NASCAR for, for putting the series together and letting us uh, letting us race in, a, in an organized series with where everybody can, can make a goal to, to make it to the top and uh, be able to participate. Uh, you know, and also everybody that's that's helped out this year. I've had uh, I've had help from a lot of people. I mean, the list would be would be way too long to say, but uh, you know, they they know who they are. Thanks a lot. And uh, and also got to thank my parents. Uh, they they cheer me on every every race, and they watch every race, and they get they get way more nervous and uh, and get way more tense than I do watching these. So you know, gotta give thanks to them for all the support. And uh, you know, looking forward to the offseason. Looking forward to the weekend at Homestead. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next year. That's Ray Alfala, driver number two. And, of course, you can hear him in a full comprehensive interview on the season finale of Hot Lap Radio coming up one week from tonight, hotlapradio.com, to hear the interview with Ray Alfala. Thomas Lewandowski finished in the third-place position, and he is standing by with Nim Cross. Thomas Lewandowski in your Wrangler Chevrolet finishes in the third spot. Thomas, pretty good run for you today. Uh, inside and outside the top five there a little bit, but a good strong run there at the end. Yeah, I had a pretty good car today. At the beginning of the race, um, not really sure if it was just me adjusting the traffic or not, but I lost a few positions. But I knew I had a really good car. Uh, me and Garlinski were working on a setup for this for a couple days now, and I knew I had a good piece under me, and just kind of picked them one at a time in the long run. You and John have really gotten a hold of this new tire model, an iRacing 2.0. Uh, any any new strategies going forward into next season? And, uh, you know, with the new tire model, you feel like you got a good strong run for the championship next year? Yeah, I really do. Um, you know, we'll just have to wait and see on strategy, what uh, how iRacing updates it, you know, with the, with the cars and stuff. Um, they've been doing a great job so far, and I'm really looking forward to uh, some more updates from the, from those guys. And uh, I think as of late, you know, how we've been running, I have a very good shot at the championship next year. Well, just probably just outside the top 12 tonight in points, uh, maybe a better run for next season. You're looking pretty good. Tell us who uh, makes it work for you and uh, who you'd like to thank. Well, first I'd like to thank all my teammates over at JRM, we all worked pretty good together on these setups, you know, past couple months. I got to thank Wrangler, Whiskey River, you know, Tax Slayer, uh, all these guys giving the track each week, and without them, you know, win beer. Well, great job on the, the second half of the season, Tom, and uh, great job throughout the season. Good job on your third place run tonight. We're going to throw it over to Tim Terry, who has Josh Berry. Josh Berry coming home in position number four. What a great run for this number 72 tonight at Homestead. Yeah, it was a good run. I had a good car. Didn't really put much effort into it like I should because I've been gone. But um, car was good and just kind of raced smart and saw a lot of the guys around me in the points take each other out. So I just tried to finish the race and gain some spots and maybe a little cash at the end of the year. And right now, looking at the standings on the iRacing website, unofficially position at number eight in the standings. So position number eight should grab you a little bit of iRacing credit, $350 in that. And a great run to finish the season, not only this week, but last week as well. The last couple of weeks leading up to the finale have really been strong for this number 72 team. Yeah. Um, there for a while. I mean, I've had, had a lot of bad luck this year, but a lot of times I've been running pretty decent. But these last couple of weeks, I've We've had good cars and, and had some luck on our side, so been able to finish where we should have. And, and I was probably finished a little bit better than I really was tonight, but um, just race smart, and that's half the deal in this for sure. I mean, it's so hard to pass and well, pretty much impossible to pass, so it, it worked out to uh, get up front and keep track position. This season, one win and seven top fives. What are the goals for the 2012 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship? Uh, honestly, I, I don't really know. I uh, haven't given it much thought. So, I just, I mean, I, just, I'm proud at least I got a win. I want to win more. I want to run better if I do this. So, um, that's what I'm going to try to do for next year, I guess. is just, there's so many unknowns in this stuff that it, you, it's so hard. You can't make. Goal. I mean, you, you make goals, but they can get changed really fast. So 
congrats to Ray on the championship. He had a fall this year, and uh, John and and obviously my teammate Hazard did a good job too, and that, that's a good top three, and I'm happy for them. Now, before we let you go this evening to celebrate another top five finish, who makes it happen for Josh Berry and the 72 team? I just want to thank Main Formance PC and everybody at iRacing and everything for putting this deal together. And like I said, congrats to Ray and the whole top three points, everybody on a good year. And to thank my teammates for their help tonight because I hadn't turned a lap until tonight. So thank them, and I'll see you all next year, I guess. And that's Josh Berry coming home with position number four. Going to kick it down to Nim Cross, who has caught up with Jeremy Allen. Jeremy Allen in the fifth position tonight. A great run for you, Jeremy. Your third top five of the season after pulling out a win earlier this year. Tell us how your race was. Oh, it feels great to get another top five, Nim. Uh, we had a decent car the whole race. We started out in ninth, and uh, just arrow was pretty bad, so we couldn't get around anybody. So we took... We took the position where we can get them and uh, found a way right there behind Thomas Hazard pretty much for the whole race. And I was, I didn't want to get in the way of the uh, points battle b between Hazard and Gerlinski. So I just moved over there and uh, rode behind Hazard for most of the race. Yeah, but you're up fighting, strong fight. Did you, was there any point that you thought that you might have had something for Gerlinski, Rafaela? I don't know if we could have got up there and passed him, but I feel like if we would have got clean air, I think, I think we could have held him off. I'm not sure, though. We took two tires there twice in a row, and the second time we were just too too tight. The first time made us a little bit better, but the second time really killed it. You were your 18th in points coming into this race. Probably picked up a number of spots. Uh, you were in definitely in relegation. You'll be ready for next season. What do you think about come next season, and uh, what do you think about your chances for next season? I think my chances look high after tonight. Uh, pretty much we uh, hit a mid-streak there where we didn't finish the race for about four or five races, and that really hurt our season. We went from running in about eighth in points, you know, looking looking for top five points to uh, just hoping to make it for next season. And uh, now that we uh, made it, it's like a chase bird for us because we can look at next year and, you know, reset and go after them. This has uh, been a great experience for me, and I'm proud I was in it. Well, we're definitely proud to have you here, Jeremy. Uh, tell us who makes it happen for you and, and, and who your friends are. First off, I just want to give a shout-out to my best friend, Billy Angstat, for spotting for me pretty much all year. And, Mason Baker Designs, uh, he picked me up about midway through the season. We had some sponsor trouble. Just want to give him a shout-out. Told him we're going to get a top five all year, and to get it this late in the season is kind of disappointing, but bittersweet. And I uh, just want to give a shout-out to the guys who made so much racing. They uh, gifted me a setup this week, and it definitely wasn't, uh, definitely wasn't bad. I was able to run with them and felt like we could had a shot to win. Great job today, Jeremy, and we look forward to seeing you next season. And we'll send it back over to Tim Terry. And I've caught up down here with Brian Schoenberg, driver, the number 55. First of all, Brian, not too bad of a night. We saw you make some awesome saves earlier in the evening, though. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. Um, it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't that great either. Um, I don't know. Um, the Facebook.com slash uh, Team JSR Chevy. I thought it was going to be great at a nice qualifying run, then just drop like a brick in the race. You know, we made the car better. Um, I had a lucky caution when uh, my team car, Jameson Speeds, was running great, and he got destroyed so that's unfortunate for him but it was able it, it led me to a top 10 finish which i really wanted when i came back i wanted a top five at phoenix and a top 10 here and i got both of those so i'm really pleased um we've gone from ninth to six the last two weeks in points and if i was a better driver tim i'd finish top five in points but i can't complain too much and it has been a fantastic season with those 17 starts top fives you have five of those Short of the win column, but you had some great races here this season that you came mighty, mighty close to doing so. 2012, do we see you as the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship champion? Probably not the champion. Depends who I work with. Um, I don't know. I still got to figure all that stuff out. Um, I won to finish around 7th in points at the start of this year, and I got 6th. So, I mean, hey, it's not too bad. Um, It just depends on everything, but I mean... I really just have to thank Ray Alfal and Jason Loafing so much for the year. Without either of them, I just quit racing because they just give me setups, and they're both great friends, and we just have great cars every week, Tim. And, gosh, it's just so much fun. And, you know, the fans, I mean, can you hear them? Just thank the fans. They're still cheering out there, Tim. But um, do I have time to thank everyone real quick, or are you guys going to cut me off? I know it's my birthday, and thank you so much for taking me. You certainly have time to thank everybody, and Nim was going to sing you happy birthday, but I guess he didn't bring his harmonica to tune his voice up. So the, the <laughs> mic is all yours, whoever you want to thank. 
just for the year, man, I just got to thank Ray Alfala, Jason Wolfing, Inside Sim Racing TV, Facebook.com slash Team JSR, JDR Graphics, Pro Geek Consulting, Xlander, Hot Lab Radio. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm, I just had such a great year, just a great team, great sponsors, and I got to thank you guys so much because, I mean, you guys have all become really good friends here at um, PSR. And, uh, you know, I know I didn't get a top five, but thank you so much for um, interviewing me on my birthday. And also thanks to Lance McGrew for entertainment purposes. And, you know, just thank the fans, right? Just what a great year, and thank you so much for everything. And that's what it's all about. Brian Schoenberg coming home this season in position number six in the point standings. And, of course, you can hear Brian, as well as many other, the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship drivers on the season finale of Hot Lap Radio coming up in one week time. HotLapRadio.com. Nim Cross, final thoughts from this 2011 season. Well, it's been an outstanding season. It's been a whole lot of fun um, with the PSR TV crew. Uh, we want to let anybody out there know who's listening. You are all welcome to become a part of iRacing.com. Just head on over to www.iRacing.com. And if you're new, you can sign up uh, for one month and get two free months. So we got that membership uh, there for you also. And remember, if you feel the need for speed, iRacing.com is the place where you want to race. Fantastic season. Congratulations to Ray Alfala on the championship. Congratulations to John Gorlinski on the win in the season finale. And hats off to all these drivers who made it this far. And it's going to be an awesome season next season when those pros battle it out in the offseason to get up into the 2012 NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. I can't wait for it in February. That's going to do it for us here on PSR TV. So for the whole crew, Ilka Hapala, Zach Stanko, Ian Bushing, Matt Racing Kid, Thomas, Chuck Johnson, Nim Cross, and Tim Terry reminding you that we still have one more to go. We're going to crown a champion on the roadside coming up on Saturday, October 22nd at the Silverstone Racetrack. That's the NVIDIA Series Championship Race presented by iRacing.com. Hugo Luis, Gregor Hutu, and Klaus Kivikas going to go for that championship. So for all of us here at PSR TV and iRacing.com, my name is Tim Terry saying keep the hammer down and we'll see you at the track.